Today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step instructional video on how to mix acoustic guitar and vocals using only the plugins in GarageBand. Now really quickly, I have to say thank you very much to Dale Patkow. I hope I'm saying your name right. You left a comment on my I want your video requests video. Um, and so thank you for leaving that because now I'm making that video about two months late, but I'm still making it. But you guys, if you want me to make videos specifically for the things you're curious about, leave a comment on that video. I'm leaving a link in the more info area and one floating up by my head now. Um, so click on that link if you want to leave requests for videos. Anyway. Let's get right to it. So this is a song that I did um, for one of my Monday music videos. This is Show Me That You Know How To Love. And um, so just I just reduced it down to acoustic guitar and vocals. And so let's get right into it. So I'm using an E100S on the acoustic guitar, just so you know. And here's what it sounds like, nothing on, all by itself. All right, so not bad, a little bit uh, thuddy, a little bit dull, but I typically tend to try to get warmer guitar sounds when I'm uh, miking them. I try to get uh, as warm as I need them to be, right? So um, when we've talked about miking and all that kind of stuff before, check out the videos on how to do that, how to record acoustic guitar and vocals. This will be, you know, the follow-up to that, basically. Um, so anyway, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you guys what I have done um, in the past, what works for me, and that's what we're going to show. So I'm gonna go through these presets and I'm just gonna go one by one and listen to them to see which one sounds best right out of the gate. Okay, so to me, there was, oh boy, there's three in there that I really like. I like this echo strum, very nice. As is the natural stereo. I might actually go for that one. Natural strum. Nah, I didn't like that one. And, that, and sharp chorus was pretty cool. Anyway, let's go for natural stereo. I think most of you are probably sitting there going, go, oh, the stereo one's the best. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Now I've opened up the stereo one, and now I have these plugins that I need to go through and uh, just sort of affect the way I need them to be. So here we go. Let's go up here. We're gonna go down to guitars, and we're just gonna go, let's say, uh, acoustic guitar all by itself, just like that. Let's see what this sounds like. Oh, first off, let's turn off this stereo delay and this other EQ. That sounds pretty darn good right out of the gate. I'm gonna take off this high end just to make sure that there's no extraneous high end. And I'm looking at this 200 and this 100 right here. Um, they're bumping maybe a little bit higher than I'd like. All right, so I'm gonna grab that 200 and I'm just gonna try to notch it out. I'm gonna come over here to the Q and reduce it. Uh, sorry, increase it so it's sharper. There we go. And I'm just gonna notch that out. Yeah, see that 200 is always the fat, okay? So I'm also gonna bring out a little about that 100. Okay, I think I'm liking that so far. All right, so the next thing in the list is gonna be the compressor. And I'm just gonna go down these, turn on the presets, and let's see what we get. Um, I've done this before I made this video. So, okay, I'm gonna turn this on. So what I'm doing by turning this on and off is just making sure that the output gain is set properly. Okay, so it's a little hot, right? as is usually the case when you turn these on. Now there are two ways um, you could do this. It depends on how your recording is. Since I have recorded this properly, and I'll show you that I did, um, these are my signal strengths so you can see what I talk about is what I practice. Um, we are, you know, living in this range of well, you know, peaking somewhere between 25 and 50% on this gauge right here, um, but not really going over 25 much, right? I tried to, it's a finger picking thing. I didn't want there to be too much signal um, or not too much. I just wanted there to be just the right amount. This might be a tiny bit on the low side, but very, very minimally. Anyway, 
point is, I don't have to use that gain plugin like I have expressed like I have expressed in other videos, um, because I, the gain here is pretty pretty good. My set my signal strength is good. So what I do need to do is bring down this gain output a little bit. So I just do that by turning it on and off, listening for the volume difference, and then just adjusting it so I don't hear a volume difference, okay? Okay, and this is a really good example of, you know, what a compressor is doing. Just listen to the high end and some of like the, the noise of my fingers on the strings, how they come out a little bit more with this compressor on. Pretty nice, okay? So that's what's going on with that compressor. Now let's keep going down the row here. There's another EQ that's gonna come in after the compressor, just in case that the compressor did something to your EQ that you didn't really want it to. Now this is gonna be optional. Using two EQs isn't something I always do. Sometimes I do after the compressor, but I don't always do it. Um, let's look at this EQ. In fact, you can see that it's bringing down the high end. Like, so, you know, it, it knows that that compressor is accentuating the high end. Which I might do, I'm gonna bump it up just a little bit above 2K. And again, I'm gonna increase this cue just to narrow the path a little bit. Just the tiniest bit. I really do want to hear the like the fingers on the string and like there's a part where I'm strumming um, with the back side of my index finger so you get a little bit of the fingernail sound. Um, just a nice component to make sure that you grab. I'm doing it after the compressor. Okay, so again, now let's go down to the stereo delay and turn that back on because that's what was giving it that stereo effect. And I'm not gonna touch this at all. This is, this is what it's set up to, just so you know. This is the stock thing. I didn't touch this at all because here's why I don't touch these things. Whenever I mess with the GarageBand effects that are designed to do stereo stuff like the stereo delay, I mean, the delay may be less. I will play with it. But like the image spreader, any of those things, I tend to sort of go with those presets because I know that I can trust them. Uh, my experience is that the more I mess with them, the more I screw it up. And it's not a matter of like not knowing what I'm doing. It's a matter of not having enough um, information about what I am doing. It's one of those limitations of GarageBand. So I got that shuffler thing from uh, from Waves. It's like a, a image spreader, really good thing. And it gives you all the details you need. However, you can do this on GarageBand. Just don't mess with those presets if you don't want to mess it up. I think that sounds pretty darn good, you guys. All right, so now let's go down to the vocal and check it out, okay? So this is the flat vocal. Uh, we're gonna listen to this again. We're, we're on the E100. Flipping through a doorway, tripping through the trees. I went search. Quietest microphone on the market in its, in its class. There is so little noise coming out of that microphone. When I plug this thing in, I mean, here's a dead section. Listen how quiet it is. There's barely any hiss or any sound. If you've ever done that on one of your recordings and you're like, gosh, there's a lot of hiss there, it's your microphone. The E100 doesn't do that. Um, anyway, so uh, let's go into the EQs here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Go down this list until I find one that I like. Um, so let's just get to the top. Flipping through a doorway. I went searching on a question that didn't look for me. I never got the answer, I never pulled on that sword Never realized how fun it was until I got so bored I've got some time in my day To carefully choose every word I say And in those lines I chose are all the words I know I don't need any of the experimental ones I So like sit 
next to me and classic vocal baby super easy okay so again we found what we like now we're going to come down here to the eq let's just go into uh voice and let's look for oops voice and male lead vocal i like that sound and sit quietly and show okay so one of the comments i saw on that uh, video requests thing. Somebody uh, inside of the thread for Dale Patkow, I think, let me look, uh, Graham McKenzie, you talked about never being able to get a vocal up front, okay? So one of the things about getting a vocal up front is removing as much low end as you need to, okay? But it's usually the low end in a vocal that is getting in the way. Um, so in this case, look, we can already see it paused here. You can see this bump right below 200, right above it. Um, let's just keep playing, but because I guarantee you there's stuff, more stuff in this 200 range that's messing up our uh, ability to be up front, okay? Show, show me, me that you know how to love. It's right there. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Show me that you know how to love. Now, one thing I'm going to do is bring it in a little bit below 200, right around 100, just to have it. So it'll just be, actually, let's pull this uh, high pass back. So it'll just be a little bump right there. Show me that you know how to love. Which just makes sure that I do have a little bit of low end in there, you're right? I don't want it to sound like I'm singing through a telephone um, or an old telephone, let's say that. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Okay, good. I think I can live with that for now. Um, I think we have a second EQ to deal with after the compressor. So again, we're gonna come into the compressor, we're going to voices. And I really like uh, the vintage vocal one right here. This one's nice. I wanna remind you guys, when you're using these presets and these plugins, they're exactly the same as Logic. We just don't get the graphic interface, like the fancy stuff. But these are the same exact presets, same exact plugins that are in Logic. Don't forget that. So that's why I recommend using the presets and then going around and tweaking them because they're awesome. Um, all right, so vintage vocal, we're gonna go in and do the on off trick just to make sure that we're set right. Day to carefully choose every word I say. And in those lines I- All right, so it's too hot, so probably about 3 dB. I chose are all the words I know. Maybe so sit more. next to me and sit quietly and show, show me, me that you know how to love there it is show me that you know how to love show me that you know how to love me all night long show me that you know how to it is a trick and you will have to take time to learn is that a volume difference or is that the compressor doing its job sometimes your ear can deceive you and make you think that it's a volume change um but what's really happening is like other little like the lower parts of that vocal track are just being accentuated so it's it's a difficult thing to learn not, not difficult you just got to sit here and turn the thing on and off and really try to comprehend what's going on sonically is the compressor compressing parts of that signal that i like or or is that just an, an actual gain increase, right? So it takes a little bit of time and, and serious listening. Um, but, you know, use your ears, people. You'll figure it out. It's not that hard. So I think that looks pretty good. I like um, all of this. I might actually dial the attack back just a tiny bit. What a love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. That sounds good. Okay, good. So now we are done with that compressor. Let's come back down here. And uh, let's look at this second EQ. Never caught the bug. Her curiosity starts fading as the heartstrings start to tug. I was leaning out the window. Okay, so look at this. A bunch more fat came back in after that compressor. So I'm going to dial that out a little bit. Uh, actually, let's use the, this one. I'm going to bring that down just a tiny bit. Again, I'm going to increase the Q so it's a little bit more narrow. And I'm also gonna bring that guy down right below that 500. That doesn't look good to me. And again, minimal, minimal EQ changes, um, especially on the second EQ. Window, face against the breeze. Start I still think there's too much low end on that. Started planning my escape route until she said to me, I've got some time. Yeah, that's a lot back there. Let's look at that first EQ. In my day. The one I brought to carefully in. Carefully choose. That's starting to sound better. Second EQ here. Who's every word I say? 
Yeah. And in those lines I chose. Okay, see? Okay, so that right there. Now, all by itself, it might sound a little bit tiny, like, boxy or whatever to you, but in the mix, let's listen to it with the guitar now. All the words I know Just sit next to me And sit quietly And show me that you... I like the delay that's on it. But you can hear um, it doesn't sound boxy once it's joined with the guitar, right? Because that guitar has low end in it. So the two complement each other. And you hear this all the time um, out of engineers saying you got to leave space in your mix for the other instruments. And this is a perfect example of that. I need to remove the low end of the voice or as much as I need to so that it can cut past that acoustic guitar and be in front of it. Um, that low end in the guitar will sonically fill up the mix with low end, and it sort of convinces this, the listener that the low end is coming from the guitar and the voice, right? It's, it, doesn't, it just doesn't sound boxy all by its, you know, when it's in the mix. All right, so now we um, basically have a good sounding acoustic guitar and a good sounding vocal. Now the trick is this. I'm gonna turn this all the way down. I'm gonna just put this at zero. Let's just put this at zero. Oops. Now I'm going to bring this vocal in until it sounds right. I've got some time in my day to carefully choose every word I say. Okay, so at this point in a mix, now if you watch my channel, you know that I have three sets of monitors. So me personally, I'm going to sit here and go through my monitors um, just so I can hear what it sounds like. I'm going to switch over to the mix cubes now just so I can hear the balance. And in those lines I chose are all the words I know. So sit next to me. All right, and now I'm going to switch over to my eye louds. Quietly and show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Actually, you know what? I'm going to dial back that tape delay. It's a little bit on the loud side. Oh. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Now the other thing I'm gonna do at this point is I'm going to do a low volume listen. So I'm gonna actually just hit my uh, dim switch. I got a dim switch on my PreSonus monitor and station, which I love, and, and I in have those made lines videos I about it. It's the most used piece of equipment in my studio. Yeah, it's it's super valuable to listen to your and mixes at low volumes because it just gives you a real sense of how the balance is working. Um, I want a little bit more high end out of this guitar. I think. Pretty good. Okay, let's unmute that vocal now. Carefully choose every word I say, and in those lines I chose are all the words I know. So sit next. I mean, once again, proving how freaking awesome GarageBand is, you guys. Let's go in and just throw a quick master on this. Um, master track. Let's see what happens if I just use one of these factory ones. Uh, da, 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 ballad. Let's see what that sounds like. Show me that you know are all the words I know. So sit next to me and sit quietly and show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you. All right, so this is awesome. So we're, it's basically the uh, multipressor is doing the vast majority of the work here. So here's like a mastering EQ. It's the same EQ as normal. Um. She never guessed the secret. 
she never caught the bug Her curiosity starts fading as the heartstrings start to tug I was leaning out the window, face against the breeze Started planning my escape route until she said to me I've got some time in my day to carefully choose I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn that direction mixer off because I already have that stereo thing going on the acoustic guitar. Next to me and sit quietly and show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. I'm also going to turn that off. I don't like, I have a real uh, thing about high end. You know, it's like there's always too much high end in people's recordings, like uh, amateur artists, amateur engineers. You guys, you got to be careful about that high end. We want clarity, but listen to your favorite mixes. Run them through your applic through your DAW and listen and look at the EQs and how little or how much high end there is in your favorite recordings, just to get a sense of you know what's really going on. Um, but I have a thing like sort of against high end in general when I'm mastering, especially because it's one of those things that gets accentuated a lot when you master and just can become problematic. Oh. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Now, one of the things that I do love about my PreSonus monitor station is that it actually has meters on it. It has output meters. So when I'm mastering, I have some actual um, external meters to look at. So I have a, so I have an idea of what's going on. Um, since I do a ton of mastering here in my studio, I know what they typically look like, and it's usually about this. Quietly and show me that you know it. It's probably still a touch on the low side, so I could probably bring that up a little bit. And I'm going to bring the multipressor up again, another couple of dB. What love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. I think that looks about right. So what you should be noticing, and I, I basically see the same thing on my meter over here, is just a little bit of red happening in this master output, or even the master um, output here, or the, the the channel output there, or the master output here. Sorry. So after the mastering process, you're going to get a little bit of red, a little bit of peaking, but because it's being controlled by the mastering plugins, you should be fine. If you do hear any actual distortion, you got to figure out where it is. And it's most likely going to come from the multipressor in this case. Um, I mean, of course, if you jack up the gain in the limiter, it will do that too. But again, just understand that if you hear distortion, get rid of it. You don't want that. You want to basically have just a little bit of red, no distortion. And let's just turn these off so we can hear the difference. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. Now the multipressor might be hitting a little harder than I needed to. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love. Show me that you know how to love me all night long. I think that sounds pretty good. So I think, you know, at this point here, I've spent, I mean, all of maybe 20 minutes doing this using the presets, you guys. Again, those are logic presets, you, logic plugins. We just don't have all the fancy graphic interface stuff. Um, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't function exactly the same. Remember, every single DAW sounds the same. They all just reduce audio signals to ones and zeros, which have no tone. The differences that people are hearing when they talk about this sounds better than that, they're hearing the differences in sound cards, rooms, speakers, all these other external components of the equation. However, what's coming out of the computer sounds exactly the same as GarageBand, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever you want to list, it all reduces it to ones and zeros, which have no actual tone. Um, so these plugins and GarageBands you can trust. Uh, they're the same as Logic. Use them. They're awesome. Just go through the list. Find what sounds good right at the beginning and then go in and tweak it and then that's it. Guitars and vocals are one of the most commonly requested videos so I'm finally doing it. How to mix it using plugins just from GarageBand and I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a long video. Um, anyway, you guys have an awesome, 
awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. So much, so much for watching, um, for liking the video because more people see the video when you like it and subscribing because I'm trying to get more subscribers. And of course, Patreon people. I'm trying not to talk about Patreon too much here on YouTube because they penalize smaller channels. The rumor is, is that we're getting um, penalized for talking about Patreon because it makes you want to leave uh, YouTube um, which is, you know, fine because I don't want you to live your life on YouTube for God's sakes. It's a big internet out there. But anyway, we're getting, um, the, the rumor is, is that smaller channels are getting punished, um, by trying to make people leave YouTube by giving them Patreon links. So I'm not going to leave a link in this video, but if you're curious about supporting this channel, because I make this content for free for you guys and you, and you think it's cool and you want to help this channel survive, check out my Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash garage band and beyond. There will be no link provided, but you will have seen it now. So if you're curious, um, go do that. All right, you guys, how long is this outro? Oh my gosh. Have a great day. Peace.